two hundred thousand dollars of costs each fucking year. So, hello, welcome back. <laughs> hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self Development with Tactics fucking podcast and or video, whatever you're watching right now. Um, should I actually close the window? I guess so, yeah. Uh, I guess so. Because maybe it would have been way too loud if not. And I, by the way, hope that I'm not too dark, actually. Wait a sec. I'm gonna use my light, my light, my light, in here, in here, yeah, it makes a difference. So that I'm not too dark. Um, maybe even like this. But yeah, uh, we are going ahead with another millionaire interview, because this should actually be an episode that's, uh, so I'm producing it on Sunday now, so today is Sunday, um, but I guess... If I'm correct, it should be on on uh, Wednesday, actually, because I'm not there. I'm having to go to the military, uh, which is quite normal. In Austria, we all have to go to the military to see if, yeah, we all have to either go to the military after our 18th birthday. Uh, but it also depends on um, what you're doing at the time. So whether you're going to school uh, or studying well, not studying or you're just doing nothing. When you're doing nothing, you totally have to do it just now, quite. Um, if not, then you can totally say like, okay, I'm going to do it elsewhere or someone else. But yeah, I'm still a little bit fucked up because I do just have to produce the posts, the videos and whatsoever for this day, which is quite some work, you know, and I do just want to do some some other things you know besides actually <laughs> recording and i don't know uh yeah i do have to do some school stuff you know and whatsoever but yeah uh we're going out with another millionaire interview because i guess um this is actually the best thing i can do in the time the best uh yeah actually the best thing that i can do in the time that i'm actually here and recording things and whatsoever um because i couldn't actually start another book summary or something and I do feel like, you know, this is the most valuable thing I can give to you. Um, but yeah. So, uh, let's go to the overview. Uh, I do think that I'm going to skip a lot of things. It always depends on, you know, what they're talking about. Um, but yeah. So, um, which is actually the Millionaire Interview 107. So, ho how old are you? And your spouse, if applicable, plus how long have you been married? I'm 30, 33, 33, 40, 43, sorry, 43. <laughs> and my wife is 45. We've been married 10 years, or four, 10 years actually. And do you have kids or family? We have three children, all under the age of eight. Um, what area of the country do you live in, uh, and urban or rural? Uh, we live in a suburban area in Texas. Uh, what is your current net worth? It's approximately 4.2 million, which is, I guess, I'm not quite sure. I think it's the the highest net worth which is on this site. No, not quite. I guess I've actually gone through one summary where uh, the net worth was actually, I think, something like 8 million or something. But yeah, so I don't know if this just matters how just how big or how high the net worth is in terms of the knowledge and of ter in terms of the uh, information that we are getting. But maybe it does even. I don't know. Maybe it does. Um, so what are the main assets that make up your net worth? So stocks, real estate, business, home, retirement accounts, ETC, and any debt that off offsets part of these. The home is worth 625000 cars 70000 Broker, pro, brokerage account 1.5 million, retirement account uh, like 401k, 403b, uh, 
Roth IRS and ETC 1.8 million, company stock 370,000, uh, 529S 100,000, real estate, real estate crowdfunding 10,000, uh, HSA 8,000, cash 40,000, mortgage 310,000 and auto loan uh, 28,000. So what is your job? I'm a senior manage manager at a high-tech company working in research and development. My wife is a primar primary care physician. And what is your annual income? And now, I'm actually sorry for not showing you. Hmm, I fucked this up. So here, yeah, I'll show you again. So you can pause, you can go through it. Just on your on your own. Sorry for all the people that are just listening or just actually watching the uh, the, 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 the the video. Messed it up. I'm sorry. So uh, he's approximately earning five hundred thousand a year, which is because I'm always forty one thousand a fucking month. Is this even true? You know, half a million a year. Well, I don't know, but you can totally see, okay, he has, yeah, he has a lot of co company stocks, 370k, so he definitely gets a lot of company stocks, I guess, or equity or whatever it is. Um, so tell us about your income performance over time. What was the starting salary of your first job? How did it grow from there? And what you did to make it grow? And where are you right now? My first job out of college as an entry-level engineer paid 40,000 a year. Prior to that, all my jobs had been hourly like five to 10 bucks an hour. So 30K felt like a king's ransom. <laughs> it's definitely a lot, you know, it's really a lot. I think it should be 2.5K 2. 2. a month. Like the, I don't still actually don't know if, if Americans actually get I'm just gonna look this up. I'm just gonna look this up. Um, So I don't know if I can find it that. Um, yeah, never mind. Gonna let it be like it is. Just uh, for the sake of actually not wasting your time. <laughs> not gonna look it up. So, but he's actually, or he was actually making 40,000 a month, which is, at my point of view at least, quite quite a lot, to be real honest. It's, it's really quite a lot. You know, I think you could totally live just greatly with this kind of money you know i don't think that you actually need a 500k a fucking year to actually live a great life i do think if you're just saving up quite quite some money over the year that you can actually just get a great trip or a great vacation just if you want to so so yeah um there hasn't been any magic formula to growing my income. I concentrated on working hard, learning as much as I could and taking on more responsibility over time. Eventually I moved into management and my areas of responsibility continued to grow. Over 20, 20 plus years, my salary has raised uh, to about, well, he had to work for 20 years so that he actually gets to uh, an annual just... Um, Salary of 200,000 a year, which is definitely a lot. You know, it's it's really a lot. It's, to be exact, <laughs> 16K a, a fucking month. This is really a lot at my point of view. So at, at least at my point of view. My wife made about 100, 130K a year coming out of her medical resistance. Her income also grew steadily as the going rate for doctors grew. After our children arrived, she cut back her hours, but still makes about 200,000 a year. The rest of our annual income is from work bonuses, company stock, dividends, and a capital and capital gains, which we tip typically reinvest. Great way. Great way. 
Um, what tips do you have for others uh, who want to grow their career-related income? My wife and I are fortunate that we both found careers that are high-paying to begin with and in which we have been able to perform at an above-average level. Having said that, I can honestly say that neither of us uh, chose our fields because of money. We both had an affinity to math, to math actually, and science, and we chose fields that were interesting and played to our strengths, which is totally important, I guess. You know, I do think you know, no, no matter what you're doing, you know, unless it's just really fun for you, I think you can decent can make decent money in it. You know, you can make decent money as producing videos, as a YouTuber, or as a film or whatsoever if you're good at it and i do kind of feel like you know if it's really something that you like and really something that you also love and that makes you happy when doing i really do think that you will just be successful as well because you will do more than eight hours a day because it's so fun for you and it because maybe it isn't just like work for you do you think you will probably do more than that but yeah so what i feel like is that people actually should try out a lot of things. And I'm uh, quite looking forward to my time actually trying out a lot of things in terms of actually, yeah, workplaces. I don't know. You know, the first thing after school that I'm going to do is just going to work, applying for jobs, seeing what I'm going to do. Maybe I'm actually going to a, quite a big company and making an internship there, paid one, actually. Um, could also do that, you know. I'm... I will be just living at my parents' home and I will just are willing to see what I'm actually interested in. So I do think that I'm not going to study anything just right after school, even even though I could. But I really feel like, you know, I want to see what's fun, what's not fun for me, what makes me happy, what doesn't make me happy, what I feel like this is fulfilling me. You know, there's so such a lot of things you can do on this planet that, I don't know, I think just trying out and seeing what's just working for you is the way to go the way to go sorry <laughs> um having said that i can honestly say that neither sorry and we were usually in that in that both of us work for the same companies we started with uh with out of school resistancy uh what has worked for us is consistency we might have been able to increase our earning um by job hopping more often but uh, but by not job hopping, we've had no period where we weren't earning, uh, weren't contrib 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 contributing to reti retirement accounts, weren't vesting company stock, weren't uh, building a top-notch reputation within our companies and ETC. It is also not in our responsibilities to job hop. We are all about stability and consistency. It's much like investing in general. It's worth Mentioning that in terms of career tra trade trajectory, my wife's career and mine have been different. My wife has always uh, wanted to be a great clinical physician. Uh, she has no interest in administration, committees, politics or climbing the ladder. She has spent the minimum energy possible on those things. She maximizes time with patients and reading the medical literature. Thankfully, just... Just, quote-unquote, just, he says, being a great doctor is enough to earn a very good income, which is totally true. You know, I do think that, you know, if you're able to solve someone's problems, then it makes sense that you're making a lot of money because there is someone who needs you because you're solving the problem and you are having a product or a service that's valuable for others. And I think that's the same thing for YouTubers and all the people who are producing videos as well. I do really feel like, you know, if it's really videos, you know, no matter who produces them, if there are videos that are somehow valuable to others, if it is in terms of entertainment, if it's in terms of knowledge or information, if somebody can need these, then there's just the right for them to be there. You know, the market always decides, which is an incredibly great uh, quote by Gary Vee. He always just underlines that the market is the only place that's kind of yeah, really charges the work of you, you know, and you will totally see, and I will totally see, after, I don't know, two years, three years, five years of, you know, work putting into my videos, I'll see if they pop or not, I'll see if somebody would be interested in them or not, I'll see, you know, but you just have to put in some time and energy, and I really try not to put in any money, by the way, just, you know, or the least amount of money possibly. 
That approach would not have worked as well for me. If I had remained a purely technical engineer with my nose to the grindstone, my income would have grown but not to the 200,000 per year. I had to learn to differentiate myself from my peers. I had to learn a lot of soft skills, management, communication, finance, HR. I had to gain some political savvy. Savvy? It's S A double V and Y. Uh, so that has so that has been a difference between my wife and me. Uh, you need to know how to grow your income within the specific constraints of your situation. Uh, what is your work like? Work life balance look like or like actually? Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I just keep that one short. So, what's your work life balance looking like? I'm not as good as. It's not as good as we would like would like it, but it's not awful. Around the time uh, our first children was or child was born, my wife gave up hospital call and became purely clinical based. So there are no more two aim drives to the hospital. On weeknights we almost always eat dinner as a family, but we often work after the kids are asleep. We seldom work weekends. Uh, travel about I travel about one week per quarter for work for work. This is hard on my wife as she has the kids by herself that week on top of her job, which is incredible, I guess. Um, there have been periods, especially when our ki kids were inf infants and we were getting very little sleep, when I honestly questioned whether we could keep it up. I entertained the, the thought of becoming... I entertained the thought of becoming a stay-at-home father because my wife's salary has exceeded mine during most of our marriage. There just weren't enough hours in a day and we were exhausted. We pushed through the phase and are now in a period of somewhat better balance. Um, yeah. And do you have any sources of, in of income besides your career? If so, can you list them, give us a feel for how much you earn with each and offer some insight into how you develop them? Uh, we earn dividends on our investments and I get a bit out of, bit out, a bit of income from my crowd sourced real estate account but most of our income is from our jobs i read a lot about side hustles and how everyone needs to have multiple income streams sorry but with all the demands on our time see above we have zero interest in a in a side hustle this is probably a great idea for some but neither of us wants to trade time for more money at this point in our life i do think so even though I really have to say diversifying what you what you're getting is at my point of view pretty crucial you know it is definitely something different if you're just in his or also her position because they are both making a lot of fucking money you just have to think about it they're both making just if you count them together or if you add them they're making seven hundred thousand dollars a fucking year it's just amazing this is <laughs> this is actually fun for me just seeing what they're making in a month to be honest even though I hate maths somehow sometimes I, like, I even like it but most of the time actually not which is 60k a fucking month it's something it's totally something um, safe what is your annual spending and this was actually something that was This somehow was a little bit disturbing for me as I read it. So we spent close to 200,000 last year and see below, which is I think incredible and just seeing and hoping that they actually spend it for some things that just are one-time buys, like, you know, for the children or whatsoever. Uh, what are the main categories expenses that this spending breaks into? Um, I switched from Quicken to Personal Capital about 18 months ago. I used its cash flow features to look at our spending. A few things jumped out. First, we've spent a lot in the past year. Frankly, I'm embarrassed that it was so high and I see plenty of opportunities to cut back. Second, I need to work on classifying expenses. Personal capital does a decent job, but many things were incorrectly categorized and I had to spend a few hours cleaning it up to get an accurate view. Uh, the main categories are below. The rest, I think I'm not gonna read them. Uh, home mortgage 55k, uh, property tax and whatsoever, childcare 35k, general merchandise 
um, which is Amazon, Home Depot, Target, whatsoever, 10K, Charity, 10K, which is great. I love this. I really love that he's actually <coughs> giving away so many money for charity. It's quite a lot, to be honest, you know. Auto loan, 9K, home maintenance, 8K, travel or vacation, 8K. Uh, a lot of this is airfare on family trips. We are pretty frugal once we reach our destination, but flying five people anyway is never cheap. We also splurged on a 10th anniversary trip, which was uh, our first trip without kids in several years. Groceries, 8K, 8K. $600 a month for groceries. That's quite a lot, to be honest. I don't know. I do have the just experience that you can actually... Well, okay, I'll see. Well, you know, 60, $666 quite dollars is quite a lot, you know, but it's not like just enormously, I'd say. You know, it's, it's quite okay, I guess. It's quite okay. Uh, eating out, 5k, pets, 5k, insurance, 4k, healthcare, whatsoever, clothing, 2k, entertainment, 1.5k, subscriptions, $900, New York Times, New York Times, um, yeah, and whatsoever. So do you have a budget? If so, how do you implement it? Uh, we have never had a budget. Our, our approach is to max out everything, our employee, retirement accounts, our Roth, uh, Roth IRAs, and whatsoever. Um, so what percentage of your gross income do you save and how has that changed over time? Uh, yeah, I think the budget thing, I'm not going to read this. Yeah, making the decision now that I'm not going to read this. Um, we save about 40% of our gross income, which is okay, I guess. I haven't tracked our savings rate over time, but I'm certain it has grown. Early in my career, I was only investing enough in my 401k to earn the employer, the employer match. Now I max it out. Our lifestyle has inflated, but at a slower rate than our income has grown. Hmm, I see. I see. Uh, what is your favorite thing to spend money uh, or to splurge? I splurge on a very nice. I splurge on a very nice car. $80,000, which is, I think, I don't know, you know, if he was alone, I guess, he would just, he would just have a bigger car, a more expensive a car, you know, just 80k for a car isn't that much, to be honest, somehow, it is a much, it is totally much, but yeah, a year ago, uh, this really the only luxury item that we own, we don't have any expensive tastes, yes, the car above was an exception, our family vacations tend to be a national, in national parks, we stay in cheap hotels. We both uh, pack a lunch, pack a lunch most days. We don't buy expensive clothes. Um, for dinner, we do eat out frequently. My wife is the family cook, and eating out is a way to give her a break on the weekends. Investment or investing. What is your investment philosophy? As I mentioned above, we max out every tax advantage account possible. Beyond that, we put money into our brokerage account every single month. We do have a financial advisor who has helped us with our asset location, allocation and fund selection. Currently, we have about 59% US stocks, 80% international stocks, 11% US bonds, 2% international bonds, 7% alter alternatives and 3 well, like Bitcoin, I guess, and 3% cash. Some of this is the index some of this is index funds and some is actively managed. We rebalance early or yearly actually. Um, which is I think pretty dangerous, isn't it? Uh, I've, I've always heard that you should never ever have some actively managed shit because I don't know. You know, at least it's always the thing that Tony Robbins is saying. He is always just really relying on index funds. I don't know. I'm always pondering around with actually buying his book. Even though I really have to say I haven't even finished uh, Seth Godin's book. To be real honest. I do just really have to allocate the time for actually reading. I don't know. But I would like to, to read it. I would really like to read it. Because I have the hope of actually just getting to know 
um, yeah, more of the financial wor world through reading this book that I'm just willing to somehow read, uh, which is Unshakable, which is about investing. Uh, even though I do always think about like, you know, is this even relevant to me? To me? Um, isn't this only a book that's somehow relevant to people that, uh, yeah, just are somehow living in the US? Because I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, we don't own precious metals or anything else that's outside the mainstream. I did buy 500 bucks of Bitcoin as a curiosity and to motivate me to follow what's happening with cryptocurrency and blockchain. I don't consider, I don't consider that as an investment, however. Um, the best investment, uh, your worst investment, the overall return. It turns out this is a challenge to measure precisely. Some accounts like the 400k make this incredibly easy so you just enter the dates of interest in the web in the website our brokerage account on the other hand doesn't offer such a tool so i've tried to calculate it myself which is very tedious in terms of data entry uh, my best estimate is that we are in the 10 uh, 8 to 10 percent range um, across all accounts which is i think not that bad um even though I do have to say that I guess, I'm not quite sure, I'm only guessing, um, because these are also things that, uh, like, you know, I've heard them once um, from very, very just inspiring people, and I do forget, you know, data, you know, it depends on which data, but I tend to forget it sometimes, um, which is totally normal, I guess. Um, no, but I think that Ray Dalio is actually making 30% in return, or 20% or something, which is, which seems to be a lot, you know, they always were like, you know, it's so amazing or whatsoever, I didn't know that, I, I, I thought like, you know, it, it is something, but I didn't think like, you know, it's just an enormous amount of money or, I don't know, but it's, you know, if you just, uh, let's say 5,000, this is, uh, times 20, Is it, is it 1,000, 20 through 100? It's 1,000, you know? 20% of 5,000 is 1,000, so it's it's totally something, you know? You know, if you... Hmm, then, you know, the, real, the really compound interest, you know, comes into the play because actually just, you know, if you're just saving and saving and saving, and at the end you're maybe having, I don't know, let's say you're having... 100,000, 100, 100 through 20 times 20 divided by 100 is 20 fucking K. Totally something, you know? 20 fucking K just quite for free. But yeah. Um... The net worth, how did you accumulate your net worth? Except for my father, our parents are still living, so we are not inherited anything. Both of us graduated from college or med school, uh, resistancy essentially broke. <laughs> essentially broke. Uh, by some miracle, I graduated from college with no student loans. I attended a relatively low cost pu public university, had some scholarship support. Uh, some support from my parents, and I worked part-time in college. Um, all of that helped me graduate with a net worth of roughly zero, uh, which is better than a negative number. My wife had about 100k in debt from medical school when she started out, which is amazing. You know, at my, in my country, it's totally for free. Like, it's for free. For free. Can do it. You do just have to have the, sometimes, especially for medical uh, studies, you do have to have a certain uh, uh, quote. Can you say quote? I don't know. You know, you just have to have, um, like, good marks. Pretty good marks. And this is the only thing you're having to have, quite. Um... So we both both work in fields where the pay is good. And so, yeah. Uh, 
um, blah, 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 blah. Did you build road bumps? So what are you currently doing to maintain or grow your net worth? Stay the course in terms of saving and investing. Our salaries are continuing, continuing to grow, uh, though not at a dramatic rate. We aim to let our lifestyle inflate, us, inflate at a sl lower rate than our earnings are growing. Our oldest child won't enter college for another 10 years. Uh, we are happy with our house and have no need to move. Bearing an unforeseen, unforeseen catastrophe, we really shouldn't have any huge 100,000 plus expenses. Um, we need to let our investments work their compounding magic over the next decade plus. Yes, I'm aware we are likely to have one or more correction during that period. A correction is basically, if I remember correctly, um, if the market actually um, falls by 10% or sinks by 10%, something like this. I, I think it was 10%. Let's see. Actually not giving you some shit. Uh, Um, a correction is generally defined as a decline of 10% or greater in the price of a security uh, security from its most recent peak. Now you know. Maybe. So do you have a, a target net worth you are trying to attain? We would like to have a net worth of 7 million by the time we are in our mid-50s. We think that will, that will be enough to sustain us through retirement. I totally think it is. Uh, currently, our two largest expenses categories by far are housing and childcare. Um, how old were you uh, when you made your first million and, and have you had any significant behavior shifts since then? Uh, we hit one million when I was 34. I remember telling my wife and she shrugged her shoulders. It wasn't that she didn't care, it was simply her signaling that crossing an arbitrary financial milestone wasn't going to change how we or how going to change who we or how we acted. Um, so they didn't. After the first milestone it took another 3 years to hit 2 million, 3 more to hit 3 million and then 1.5 years to hit 4 million. Three, four. Um, um, what money mistakes have you made along the way that others can lead from or learn from? Uh, like many people, I uh, would have started investing at a younger age. I knew absolutely nothing about investing when I came out of college. I had no idea uh, what a 400k was. Um... So investing, 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 how to become wealthy, um, we grew up with a Hollywood view of what wealth looks like, private chats, mentions, butlers, etc. we obviously don't have any of that. If the idea of being a millionaire seemed exotic until it happened, so I think the first thing to do is to shed the classic notions of what wealth looks like and to shed the mindset that wealth is unattainable. This is where a book like The Millionaire Next to is helpful. A quote I heard recently, and I can't remember the source, is you can act wealthy or you can be wealthy. Very few people can do that that resonated with me. Um, there's a lot of great content on the mindset difference between wealthy and non-wealthy people on popular financial blogs, so I won't try to repeat all that. Some of the key points I've internalized are think long-term, marry the right person, totally, avoid a victim mentality, the world doesn't owe you anything, uh, expect to become wealthy, don't you wealth as something that happens only to lottery winners or cheaters or, some, or something like this, um, be willing to be different. The average person is not wealthy. The behaviors that lead to wealth are also not average. They totally aren't. But yeah. I hope because time is running. Time is fucking running. I guess. Um, so how did you learn about finances and what age did it click? I didn't learn about finances I didn't, uh, until I was well into adulthood. My father was old school. Uh, his view was that it was... Uh, the father's job to worry about money and everyone else's job. 
My father was self-employed and would frequently be paid late or not paid at all for work he did. This caused some stress in the household and blah, 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 blah. Uh, when I got my first job after college, I was told about things like the 400k and employee stock purchase plan during orientation. That was a forcing function to learn some basics. Being an engineer by training, I'm mathematically oriented like most engineers. I'm an optimizer. Those are obviously assets when it comes to finance. I read The Millionaire Next to It had a huge impact on me. I grew up in a and a town where it was common for people to show off their apparent wealth, which is total bullshit. Uh, I learned from the millionaire next to that you uh, don't have to show off to be wealthy. In fact, showing off is a good way to never become wealthy in the first place. Um, more recently, I started following a few dozen financial sites, including this one. Many of the people I read about uh, on these sites are, are, are inspiring in the financial knowledge and discipline to save. That's been a motivator to learn, and there's a lot of good information available online if you know where to look. Sadly, another motivator was my father's illness and death. Sorry for that. Um, uh, so charity, how much does it give? Uh, we do give about 10k per year to charity. We have a few organizations that we support consistently, including both our alma maters. Yeah, um, this is with... This was it with the episode. I do hope that you got something out of it. I totally have. I totally now see, okay, the million and the next one will be maybe a book that I'm going to go through because so many people actually, uh, yeah, pointed it, pointed it out. But yeah, I wish you the best health, wealth, happiness and success. And yeah, do not forget to think about how you're going to be remembered. So quite your legacy and giving back to the people because that's important. And I'll see you.